Hello everybody, my name is Uncle Hansa and I'm back again to talk about Chinese characters. Today I would like to talk about three English words to start out with. Uh, the first word is etymology. Etymology means the history of words, uh, but in our case it means the history of Chinese characters. It's often confused with another word, entomology, which means the study of bugs. Another word, uh, mnemonics. Mnemonics is a way that to help you memorize something. It doesn't necessarily have to do with etymology, but it helps you memorize something. And a third word, pedagogy or pedagogy, uh, means how you teach people, uh, particularly how you teach children. As far as the Chinese characters go, Chinese characters are almost a religion in China. In China, we have uh, many calligraphers. Calligraphers are artists, and they distort Chinese characters. I, generally, they, they cause more problems than they cause uh, uh, than they help. Uh, but calligraphy is an advanced art form in Chinese, uh, not so much in English. It's also an advanced art form in Arabic. Arabic and Chinese are kind of two special languages where calligraphy is really, really important. But calligraphy is usually not helpful at all if you're trying to understand the history of Chinese characters. Now, the history of Chinese characters, everybody talks about the history of Chinese characters, but if you go to the store and you try to buy a book that explains Chinese characters, uh, probably 75% of what you see will be absolute garbage. Uh, what they teach, they try to teach you to memorize characters, but in fact they're teaching you mnemonics. Now what is an, an example of a mnemonic? This is the character for forest. Uh, one girl told me how she remembers this. She says, okay, it's uh, two people dancing in a forest. Well, this kind of looks like two people dancing, uh, maybe, and so it helps you memorize the word uh, for forest. But unfortunately, it has nothing whatsoever to do with the actual history. The actual history comes from uh, two trees, uh, which uh, represent, many trees, uh, which represent a forest. So this is the difference between uh, mnemonics, which would be two uh, people in the forest dancing, versus uh, etymology, which is, a picture of two trees. Now, pedagogy is when we, how to teach people. And we have different kinds of people. I'm a foreigner. I started learning Chinese as an adult. Uh, I am also a physicist, a scientist, and so I like to know why we do things, why we write characters. If you're going to be literate in Chinese, you have to memorize thousands of characters uh, that to the modern Chinese have uh, no logic whatsoever. So I tried to find uh, etymology books. 75% uh, of them are mnemonics, uh, which means they're garbage. Uh, but then we have a problem of finding the actual etymology. Uh, in English, we don't have very many uh, books on the etymology. And in Chinese, we have uh, some books on etymology. Some of them are uh, quite advanced. They're like scholarly and uh, some people don't think they don't have uh, so much value. But we have several problems. One is uh, finding the story. The other is finding the complete story. Even among uh, academics, we don't have the complete story. There are many educated people who give you half of the story. There are many books uh, that explain 500 characters or 1,000 characters or even 1,500 characters, but we really want to explain all the 5,000 or so common characters. So this has become uh, quite a problem. Uh, I've spent the last 25 years trying to explain uh, the etymology of the top 10,000 characters. So it's really hard to find a good book on etymology. As an adult, as a scientific thinking adult, I want to know the etymology. I want to know why you write this character. You know, why do you memorize thousands of characters like this that have no logic whatsoever? 
Uh, teaching an adult is one thing. An adult has knowledge about the world. Uh, teaching an older Chinese child is also uh, uh, somewhat easy. Uh, a fifth grader, at least you can talk to a fifth grader, and a fifth grader, a fifth grade Chinese has quite a bit of knowledge about the world, so you can explain things to a fifth grader. Uh, but Chinese start learning uh, Chinese characters in kindergarten or before. Kindergarten children have very limited knowledge of the world, and so you, you're limited in how much you can explain to a five-year-old. Uh, so frequently, five-year-olds just memorize. Uh, you can try to use some logic, but frequently they end up just memorizing how to write it. An example of uh, how you would teach a five-year-old. If we go back 5,000 years, every five-year-old would be familiar with the country. And if we go back 5,000 years, the word for nian or year would be written like this. And the teacher would say, okay, once uh, this is rain, and this is a man, and once a year we harvest the grain, the man goes out and harvests the grain, and uh, comes in, and so that uh, means once a year. That's in, once about every 365 days. So for a small child, even a five-year-old of 5,000 years ago, this character for Nian would be very easy to understand because it consisted of pictographs. But the modern Chinese, it's not easy to understand. If we go back 2,000 years, uh, we have this character here, this means that this is a character for uh, a thousand. And the explanation is that it's a man, pronounced ren, and it has a one. Uh, so 2,000 years ago, ren and xian were pronounced the same, and so this means 1,000. The character for year got changed. So this is, uh, 2,000 years ago, it was already a little bit harder to understand. But at least they pronounced things the same, you know, so that this is pronounced Ren and the character for a thousand was pronounced uh, the same. So if we're teaching a modern Chinese child, uh, we have a problem is that the pronunciation has changed radically and it's hard to convince them that um, Qian and Ren are the same pronunciation because in modern Chinese there aren't. So this is a pedagogy problem. Uh, if the child is uh, you know, high school, uh, he can understand these things easier. And if you're a foreigner, uh, you want to understand them uh, because it makes the, the it makes the uh, character understandable as opposed to just memorizing garbage. Now this, if we go back about 1500 years, uh, we might have seen the character written like this. But if we come into the modern uh, Chinese, the character is written like this, and we have to use a lot of brain power to think about what the logic was. But if we study this character, we can learn several intermediate characters, Qian, which means a thousand, Ren, which means a person, and He, which means grain. So these are things we want to, uh, if you're studying Chinese and you're interested in the real etymology, you want to ask yourself, does this make historical sense, and does it actually relate to the original historical pictographs? That would be real etymology. If it doesn't, uh, then you're dealing with mnemonics, and uh, sometimes mnemonics are useful, because if you have to memorize thousands of characters, uh, sometimes mnemonics are the quickest way to do it. And pedagogy is, if you're teaching someone, you don't have to think of, you know, are they a, a modern Chinese five-year-old or a, a modern a foreign high school kid? Uh, you have to think about what would be the most useful way to teach them. Now, as far as the actual etymology, I will probably disagree uh, with 10 to 20 percent of the explanations with any other expert. And any expert in Chinese will disagree with each other because, uh, in fact, there's a lot of disagreement and a lot of 
thinks maybe 10% of the characters, we don't understand what their etymology is. So these are the, some of the problems that uh, you will consider if you're interested in etymology or mnemonics or pedagogy. Uh, I'm Uncle Hansa, and hopefully you'll join me next time as we discuss more about Chinese characters.